Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at First Presbyterian Church of Farmington. If you'd like a paper bulletin, they're on the table back by the door over in that direction. Uh, deacons are meeting today uh, following worship. And Feeding the Faith is preparing, they are preparing meals today after church. So if you haven't done it before, you're invited to join in and see what that's all about. Just show up in the kitchen after fellowship time and lend a hand. And if you know anybody who would like a meal or would like you think would appreciate a meal, even if they don't know about it ahead of time, uh, talk to Bonnie or Cozy or Jody. Uh, it will need like a name or address. Well, definitely need a name, address, or a contact number. Correct? Okay. Uh, if you would like to read the book called The Sailboat Church and discuss it, the first discussion meeting will be held on August 5th at 6 p.m. in the CE building. It's a very quick, easy reading book, but it will provide a lot of food for thought. Um, you can buy the book on Amazon. Um, I don't know if you can buy it on PCUSA.org or not. Um, so the goal will be to discuss one chapter at each meeting, and it's really, it's very quick. Each chapter is a very quick read. Um, mark your calendar for the Sunday School kickoff breakfast on Sunday, September 8th. So we're already starting to move in that direction. Um, and if you can help with that breakfast, talk to Bonnie. Are there any other announcements you'd like to share this morning? Hearing none, if you would like to participate, I invite you to stand and we will pass the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us join in our call to worship. Come, let us worship God with the passion and joy of King David and all the people who sang and danced before the Ark of the Covenant. Let us worship our Savior with the songs of praise and thanksgiving of the Apostle Paul and all who are blessed with every spiritual blessing. God has blessed us in our Lord Jesus Christ destined us to be children of God, and sealed us in the Holy Spirit. Let us worship God. Our first hymn is number 35, Praise Ye the Lord the Almighty.
the riches of God's grace promise forgiveness of our trespasses. Let us confess our sins. Let us pray together. Holy, holy, holy Lord, you are the God of glory. We confess that we often forget that your holiness is dangerous. We take our impurities for granted, make excuses for the sins we commit, and expect you to overlook the harm we cause while still demanding justice from others. We do not deserve your mercy. Forgive us and return us to a right relationship with you for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. You made us for the purpose of praising you. Enliven us with the Holy Spirit so that we can fulfill our calling in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. According to the riches of his grace, which God has lavished upon us and sealed for us by the promised Holy Spirit, hear this good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. <laughs> children here today, but <laughs> I'm going to talk about what I was going to talk about with the kids anyway. Um, so I've been driving a lot this last several days, the last four days or so, um, and every time I got in my car, a podcast would begin right where it left off from my journeys. So, um, this morning, I got in my car. I mean, this is through, this was true through last night, even. I had to run an errand, and when I shut off my car, that podcast was still on. Turned on my car this morning, it was not what was on. Instead, it's um, a little album I downloaded uh, from a, a guy named John Lampley. Uh, he's a musician on one of the late night shows. He has his band play on there. And I had heard an uh, interview on NPR about it, and I thought, ooh, that sounds like my kind of stuff. Because it's um, kind of like gospel jazz band stuff mixed together. Um, he has a song called Grandma's Hands, uh, which is a fun song because, for me, it means a lot because when I'm staying at the house in Peoria and Lily is there, every night I have to hold her hand while she falls asleep. Grandma, hold my hand. So I saw that song and I was just like, oh, man, <laughs> I downloaded the right album. <laughs> and um, But that song is about... His grandma um, in church because he uh, was raised in a, a predominantly black Baptist church. I think it's Baptist, maybe AME, I don't know. Um, you know, songs like Amen are on this album, a couple other ones. And, and he's talking about how um, his grandma used to play the tambourine in church, and used to clap her hands a lot in church. And um, she always had a bag of Werther's Originals um, in, in her purse, because as he says in the song, church went from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., and he was a little kid, you know. And um, 
we don't have any grandma, grandmas that play the tambourine in the middle of worship, do we? No, but I would. You would? <laughs> Exactly. So there's so many different styles of music that all fall under the umbrella of Christian music. We've been talking about having what we call contemporary Christian songs from time to time. Um, I know some. I know of at least two churches that do a jazz service. Um, there's Taze music. There's some churches that do uh, country music. There's you know, uh, gospel music, there's classic music, there's, you know, a wide variety in our hymnal now that we all, it all falls under Christian music. And so I wanted to talk to the kids about that, that there's so many ways um, that we can see God in music. Uh, one of my best friends does a uh, uh, Christian education series on listening for God in any contemporary music, rock music, punk music, whatever, you can, you can hear uh, echoes of God and God's work in our lives in just about any kind of music. So knowing that that's what I was going to talk to the kids about, Listen now to our scripture. It's from 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 1 through 5, and 12b through 19. Actually, I, I put all the 12 in there, so hear God's word. David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. David and all the people with him set out and went from Bala Judah to bring up from there the ark of God, which is called by the name of God, the name of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned on the cherubim. They carried the ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on a hill. Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, were driving the new cart with the ark of God and Ahio went in front of the ark. David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might, with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. It was told King David, the Lord has blessed the household of Obed-Odom and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Odom to the city of David with rejoicing. And when those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fatted calf. David danced before the Lord with all his might. David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, daughter of Saul, and you'll remember Saul is the king that David is replacing, not of his own choice, not of Saul's own choice. So Michael, daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. They brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place, inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the offerings of well-being, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed food among all the people, the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to each a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people went back to their homes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I promise I'll get back to walking and talking. It's just when I have a lot going on in the places I live and all of that, I don't feel as centered to walk and talk. 
And that would mean that I would either preach really short or very long. <laughs> so I'm almost there, I can tell. I'm almost back to it. So this is called Make a Joyful Noise. Really. Our closing program for Vacation Bible School, we delighted as the children and the youth sang and danced their way through three wonderful songs. I won't forget the sheer joy of many of our littles. The little ones weren't the slightest bit self-conscious as they let loose. The older ones may have wondered if they would perform well, but as we gave them positive feedback with our big smiles, they too let joy seep in a little bit. Seeing young people caught up in joyful worship delights us but it never seems to inspire us enough, or most of us enough anyway, to join them. You see, once we turn eight years old, our brain starts putting brakes on our joy if we let it. We become self-conscious, we get caught up in the judgment of others, we wrestle with body image, we listen to those silly adults who are worried we're gonna embarrass them. We worry about making mistakes and getting it wrong. We forget how wonderful we are. And unfortunately, the breaks we put on joy when we're about eight years old very seldom ever come off. Some folks mistakenly believe that alcohol or drugs restore that feeling of joy or take the breaks off. But that kind of joy is either false or brief and sometimes very costly. Real joy is a gift from God to us. Real joy is a gift from God to us. David, the shepherd boy who defeated Goliath, the man who became the king who united the northern kingdom and the southern kingdoms of Israel understood the great gift of joy. When the occasion called for it, he was able to let go and let joy be in charge of his body and his soul. Was it a unique gift that God gave him just because he was king? Was he different than us? I don't think so. I think he had some practices and a way of looking at faith that allowed him to tap into joy as an adult. Let's start with his faith. David had some very early experiences in his life that let him know that amazing things can happen. Defeating lions and other predators while he was watching the flock as a boy gave him a sense of power. Defeating the giant Goliath when all the other older men were afraid to fight him released him from the fear of others. Being selected as the king as the youngest male child gave him a sense of being special because he didn't, that didn't happen. But David, he wasn't perfect. He had a horrible weakness for women. He had a whole bunch of wives and concubines, and some of those women were married to other men when he took them away to make him his wives. So David was flawed, kind of like we are. However, he knew God as a source of power when he dared to kill prey as a young boy. He knew God as a source of protection when he could defend the Israelites and from the Philistines as he killed Goliath. David knew God as a source of love as he was selected for leadership despite the tradition that said the oldest, the most handsome, the wisest was the chosen one. And because David knew God in these ways, he understood how amazingly awesome it was that God was in his life. He knew God loved him and chose him and empowered him and gave him courage and protection. He knew that despite his flaws, God really loved him in spite of everything. 
He knew that even in the darkest of days, when he lost his son, God would give him the will to go on. He knew that the supreme creator of the universe loved him, and that gave him joy. He was so honored to be the one to move the most sacred object of God's majesty to Jerusalem. He knew that Jerusalem had become the military, political, and economic power of the region, and now, now Jerusalem was going to become the center of religious power in that region, too, because God was home with the Ten Commandments held in the precious Ark of the Covenant. That Ark had traveled with the descendants of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, and it was now going to be at home in the center of the Promised Land. How amazing, how awesome that is. It was enough to bring true joy. David also had a connection to music and poetry and the arts. He understood that singing and playing the harp, which is not the same thing as what we call a harp today, but playing the harp and dancing and writing poetry could bring one closer to God, for it's in those artistic pursuits that we can begin to describe the indescribable God. Music has the power to lift us to new heights, to take us on a journey, a faith journey. Hymns and songs can tell us of the stories of God's love and power. They can express our despair and our flaws, and they can even remind us that God cherishes us and forgives us. David had learned how to give over his whole heart and mind and soul and body to the music that honored God. This is a real gift. And so in our scripture passage today, we hear about the time when everything came together. The faith, the big moving of the, the big event of moving the ark, the music, the dancing. It all came together and expressed itself in pure joy. David danced with abandon. He sang, he processed, he ran, he jumped for joy, he hosted a feast for everyone. God is good, God is here. How could David do anything else? We need to be more like David. Is God good? Yeah. Yeah. Is God here? Yeah. Can you say it? God is good? God is good. Is God here? God is here. We have a faith that allows us to see God as a creator and a redeemer and a sustainer. All you have to do is look in the eyes of a newborn baby to see how awesome the gift of life is from our creator. All you have to do, you're not going to like this one, but all you have to do is remember some of the sins that you've committed and then come here for worship knowing that God still loves you and accepts you and delights in the fact that you're here today. All you have to do is pray for the strength or the insight or the inspiration and you know, you know that God is great. So why aren't we dancing around all the time? I'm not sure. I think part of the reason is because we let all those shoulds and oughts get in the way. You know the shoulds. You shouldn't dance unless you're thin or young or know the proper steps. You should be quiet and respectful in church. If somebody's sleeping, don't wake them up. You shouldn't do anything that might embarrass others. You should remain in control all the time. I know I wrestle with that. With the, will people think less of me if I start dancing? But Lily and I have a practice. I'm going to use the language we use because I'm talking to a three-year-old and we've been doing it since she was two. We shake our butts. 
and we dance in the living room almost on a daily basis. She doesn't care, and I don't care, and we dance our butts. And I did it here. <laughs> I think another part of the reason might be that we might not really see or believe or feel God is having that much to do with our daily lives. We may not truly accept that God cares so much about us, that God sent the only Son to show us the way to new life and true joy. We may see God only as a judge who's there at the end of our lives and maybe worry that that's not too much to celebrate. Perhaps gratitude might be something we don't know very well, and as a result, it may not be something that we express to God or even to other people. There may be a whole host of reasons why we don't express our joy through dancing or music or poetry. But hopefully, our scripture passage today will inspire you to let go and let joy. If not here today, if not here in worship, then somewhere, sometime soon, you're going to turn music on in the kitchen today, aren't you? Sure. Come on, man. Dance your way through service. Hallelujah. Amen. And then I picked a hymn that's not great for dancing to. I don't know why, I, you know, I, I knew I had to head in that direction. Why didn't I pick a good dancing song? But it's Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God, number 175. If you want to dance your butts a little to it, it's okay. Number 175. birthdays in the house today. Boy, we're going to get out early. That might be a cause for dancing. <laughs> All right. What joys and concerns would you like to share this morning? Jane. Can, hang on. They're going to get you the mic so that people on Facebook can hear when they watch. Corbin did really well, um, Michael said. Um, he, had to, he had to stay awake. Uh, well, he had, first had to sleep, and he was hoping he would sleep in the car going up. That would have gave him four hours, but he didn't do that. So he had to sleep first, and then he had to stay awake all night long. Um, they put about 20 leads on his head, and they put his head inside of this big, huge machine, and he was there for five hours, and it's supposed to get everything from the brain that they can send to Mayo's Clinic that will help them position things and get ready for the surgery. 
So he won't know any results from that at all. It just goes right to Mayo's. Okay. All right. First step done. Yeah. yeah. Good. Who else? Yep. Bye. I have a joy that uh, last yesterday we spent in Streeter with another shower for Jenny oh, and yeah. Caleb. Um, she just popped out <laughs> in the last few days, and so we are just we're down to a couple of weeks, guys, and and just prayers for for a healthy baby and mama and that when I come to grab James when they're in labor, that that goes smoothly. <laughs> but just so much joy and, and the love that, the, that his church gave to them and, and the shower, it was pretty cool. So that's great, Joyce. Good. Um, so... There's this weird thing that happens when you sit next to someone um, who gets the pages for the ER and the trauma unit. <laughs> and, and he's like, oh. <laughs> so there are a whole bunch of very serious traumas that made their way into the ER and the trauma unit yesterday. And there are a whole bunch of people in need of prayer. So, I mean, I never ever know names. I might know that there's a five-year-old girl who is in serious need of our prayer, but that's about all I know, you know. I know there's a 32-year-old who had three gunshots to the chest. There's a few other things that happened. I mean, it's just, and they got slammed yesterday. They had eight traumas in 45 minutes. So, that stuff happens all the time and we don't know it. So the, the general prayer for whoever needs God to be present with them is always in order. So, anyone else? Yeah, Tony. Hang on, she's coming. Mom's back. A fellow that I know uh, in Canton, uh, Brad O'Brien, I saw the other day that he has an acute form of cancer and uh, is starting, has to stay in the hospital, is going in for tr beginning treatments, and I want to say prayers for Brad. Okay, Brad O'Brien. Okay. Can we also pray for the political climate in this nation and for... Yeah. A decrease in the divisiveness. Yes. I saw the St. Jude runners yesterday. Uh, there was a police car, the fire truck, another police car, and then all the runners. There was quite a few runners going to a far region yesterday. Um, I can't tell you what time, but it was like in the morning sometime. But I, I thought it very nice, very nice. They had quite a, quite a group running. Mm -hmm. Nice. I had a fellow co-worker uh, pass away this week, or last, last Friday, but the visitation was Tuesday night. And they did something really kind of neat. When you went into the Funeral yeah. home, that's yeah. what I wanted to say. Okay. They had a big ta round table with all of his ties Ooh. placed. And they said, John wanted you to take a tie or two or three ties home. And after I met with his wife, Laura, Laura, before I left, Laura said, now, Sam, you be sure and get a couple of John's ties. And, you know, he worked for OSF and he wore a tie all the time. And there was a lot of ties, but it, it was really kind of neat that there was one tie that I remembered that 
I had seen him wear several times, and it was still there, so I took it. Yes. But it was something different that I'd never seen before, that they wanted to share his ties and to keep John's memory going. Nice. That's great. Gotcha. Anyone else? Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the joys that we were able to share out loud today, and we thank you for the joys that are a part of our lives that maybe we didn't share a whole lot today, but expect that other people know about them. And we thank you for your presence um, as people fight cancer and anticipate brain surgery. And we appreciate your presence in the lives of loved ones as they mourn and remember and celebrate the, the life of their friend and spouse. We thank you for the ways that you call us to serve one another, for people who deliver meals and for all of the people who pray for others, for those who drop by with a visit or send a card. And we pray, oh God, that that spirit of love and faith will guide us in our tumultuous times in this country right now. Help us to understand that there truly is so much more that binds us together than what seems to be massive divisions right now. Help us to remember that we truly are better together than we are separate. Help us to remember that Loving one another, despite our differences, brings a richness to life that you call us to appreciate, that you call us to love one another through. We pray, oh God, that someday, maybe a little bit every day, that joy will seep in into us as individuals, into this congregation, into this community, into this county, into this state, into this country, and into the world. Help us to focus more on that. Help us to be there for one another in our moments of pain and worry. Help us to be there for one another rather than point our fingers at one another. Gracious God, we ask that you be with members of this congregation as they travel and take Sabbath time and as they heal and as they move through their daily lives. Call us all together in prayer and using the prayer that Jesus taught, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have this opportunity to bring a portion of our lives, our talents, our time, and even our money, and offer them to the ministry of this congregation, and may it change lives around the world. Let us do so now.
this prayer is responsive, so I'll say something and then you join in. Let us pray together. Here we bring our gifts for your blessing, O oh God. Here we bring the rewards of our labor over the past week, months, and years gone by. Here we declare our talents to serving this faith community, to serving our fellow men and women, bringing reconciliation, healing, support, and caring. Here we offer our time to bring hope in the struggle, to enable people to fulfill their dreams, to proclaim the forgiving way. Here we bring our gifts for your blessing, O oh God. Amen. Our closing hymn is From All That Dwell Below the Skies, number 327. Before the charge and benediction, Diana, did you change your song or were you planning that all along? I changed. Thank you. <laughs> that was great. Much appreciated. That's what a good musician does. All right. Go forth into the world rejoicing. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.